Mitch Harper, Matt Biamonte here at BYU Football Spring Practice. Week four kicked off today. We're here inside the Student Athlete Building by the Built for Life Center. But a lot of interesting, I thought, observation period during practice today, Matt, with the offense making some noteworthy plays. Yeah, it was one of the best days offensively for a, a number of guys. There were some great deep balls thrown. JoJo Phillips had a phenomenal touchdown grab from Trayson Borgay. Uh, and Chase Roberts had a great long ball contested catch. From a passing perspective, this is the best we've seen in spring football. I thought the offense looked pretty good today. And, and Pokayawa Honga, he continues to make plays out of the backfield. We also saw Hinkley Falau Ropanti. We spoke with Hinkley. Uh, earlier today and he noted that he was cleared for practice coming in but uh, they kind of you know took their time to get him back to practice his first full go was last Tuesday and you know BYU had their live scrimmage last week and they kind of installed a lot of what they're going to be maybe looking like in the fall and you know, I think this team kind of took it, turned a little bit of a corner from that scrimmage. They feel pretty good about themselves, but you know, there's still some some glaring, glaring questions, particularly at the quarterback spot. But I thought today was a step in the right direction. Yeah, it, it was. And on the point of Falau, he, he had a run that reminded me of what he can bring to this offense. It was everyone's full pads. There's you know. The run game is a high priority still, the most important priority for this offense, according to Aaron Roderick. He runs out at the middle, blows up Jacob Robinson. The run probably would have went for 20 or 30 yards if they didn't blow the whistle early. So he's dynamic. And at the quarterback spot, there were some missed throws, but it was much more consistent today than it's been in previous practices. Accurate passes, letting wide receivers make plays. So uh, no one has taken an edge. Aaron Roderick was clear the battle will continue on. To me, that was a clear... Uh, indication that there will not be a starter named at the end of spring football. That's going to linger, and that's fine. But it was nice to see uh, those quarterbacks making plays in the pass game. And you honestly can't name one, to be quite honest with you, when you think about it, because you want to maintain the personnel numbers and avoid them from going into the portal. So it makes sense that it's probably going to be one of those battles that rages on to week one against Southern Illinois. You spoke with John Nelson today. He had a sack, what would have been deemed a sack on Gary Bohannon. I think John Nelson's kind of one of those guys that a lot of people don't talk about because it's not a sexy position, but he's critical to the interior of that defensive line. And he's healthy, too. That's what it was nice to hear, uh, that he's back and, and making noise from what we saw. He was mixing in with the ones. Think about that. And then also on the point of the defensive line, the final play of what we saw was a tip, a Gary Bohannon tip that was intercepted by Joshua Singh. That would have been a, uh, you know, Maybe not a pick six. Who who knows? But that ended it and practice well for the for the defense. That defensive line was creating problems, and if the quarterbacks were alive, there would have been quite a few sacks from what we saw. You'd like to see the offensive line maybe a little bit farther ahead. Uh, a guy that continues to stand out to me is Trevin Osler. He continues to earn what looks to be first team snaps and offensive tackle again. They're throwing out situations. We saw a little bit of two minute work. Uh, there was one period where they said. Period 17, TV timeout. I was like, what? That, that, that's new. I've never heard that before. Uh, but, you know, so there, it's it's not saying, oh, Trevin Osler's the starting tackle. He's still got Braden Kime, who's working his way back from an injury. Uh, but, you know, he, if if someone goes down, that's the value again in spring where you're going, okay, you're giving the, this guy these reps. They clearly see something in him. So maybe second string. So uh, something of interesting to know. Uh, speaking of with the offensive line, we, in our conversation with Ropati, uh, he, he gave glowing reviews about TJ Woods and just what he's brought to not only the offensive line, but the run game and his vision of what he expects from it. A lot of accountability from coach TJ Woods. Yeah, and it's probably one of the most important developments because if, if you can have a good run game, does it need to be – you know, top 10, I, hey, you'll take top 10, top 25. But if you're capable of running the ball, how much easier will that make the job for Jake Retzlaff or Gary Bohannon? Because that was not a luxury that Keaton Slovis had. There was no run game. You could not build the play action off of that. And today, you know, there were several good completed passes based out of play action. So that is a critical development. And it was nice to hear Aaron Roderick mention Ropati and Miles Davis as running backs that can do it all. Uh, High praise for Miles Davis in that he's no longer a uh, – gimmick's the wrong word. He, he's not a situational player. He can do it all. And, and that's what you need because last year, um, you know, 
LJ had a nice freshman year, but he's still a freshman. Now you've got LJ's got experience, Falau's got experience, Miles Davis, they've all been here a long time. You can put them in a variety of situations and not have to change your offense. Eventful stuff from BYU football spring practice. Again, this is week four. They're nearing the finish line this week. They'll have some more practice availability for the media. And the alumni game coming up on Friday across the street over at the old Provo High as what, Jake Heaps, Riley Nielsen, quarterback battle 2.0 in 2024. We're even getting a quarterback battle in the alumni game. Can't wait for that. Uh, so we'll have coverage of BYU football throughout the week, even along with BYU basketball, of course, in March Madness as I'll go to o Omaha. Matt will hold it down with BYU football. We've got you covered here on kslsports.com.